All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Dog Talk and Coffee with me, Richard Hines. And today's episode <laughs> is going to be on one of the weirdest, perplexing, I don't understand <laughs> commands that's been built in to the dog training society, <laughs> mostly the positive movement, and which makes no sense whatsoever if you understand anything about training dogs, right? The look at me command. here I don't really like that too much so I'm gonna try and get his attention on me rather than the environment that he's trying to pull towards up here see a little bit more challenging now this is normal because we I mean just a few feet away from the house is a completely new environment to many dogs and he wants to get it is the craziest weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life if you understand anything about dog training and the way dogs work what is the look at me command based on? What is the purpose of it? Why do these trainers use it and teach it? <laughs> so it's really to me what I consider a band-aid effect. You always see it being used when a dog has reactionary behavior towards anything in its environment. This issue, obviously, but this is where you start. Your next step is getting him to glance up at you and reward him as much as you can for doing that. There's a car coming right now, so I'm gonna try and be one step ahead and get his attention on me. Come here, Brutus, come here. Yes, good, come on, Brutus. Brutus, this way, come on. Come on, this way, nope. Come on. Okay, that didn't go so well. So my task next time is to be more interesting than I was that time, or to create distance between us and the moving car if possible. Come on, this way, this way, come on. Brutus, 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 yes, yes, good, good boy. He looked at me, he just glanced at me when that car was driving by. That's what you want, you want to find that moment where your dog is like, I'm thinking about listening to you. Yeah. That's yeah. good. To me. It became clear that getting too close to the road really complicated communication, so my job is to go back to the last known place of compliance from Brutus and work from there. If your dog won't take treats, you need to create distance. You can't be in front of a heavy distraction. If they're like, I care more about that distraction than this issue, obviously, but this is where you start. Your next step is getting him to glance up at you and reward him as much as you can for doing that. Right. Examples, here the dog wants a squirrel, and so it doesn't look at the squirrel and want the squirrel. We go, look at me, right? And we have the dog turn and look away from the animal and look at our face and give it a treat for not looking at the squirrel and looking at us. So let's head on out to the park and see how things go there. And now we're here in this crazy distracting environment. Let's give Bentley some time to get comfortable and sniff around before we ask him to pay attention to me. Training. Look at all these birds around here, and look, he doesn't even want to eat that. If you're doing leash training and your dog won't take a treat, like I got a big old handful of turkey right here, and you, you can see how Bentley doesn't even want it because the smells are overwhelming, the sights, the sounds, all of that. So, look at me. Look, look at me. Pay attention to me. Or dog reaction, right? Reactivity towards dogs. He's pulling towards two other dogs over here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here. Come on, no ma'am, let's go. Come on, over here, sit, see this? Do you see how she won't take the treats right here? That's because she is so focused on these dogs that are walking right now. I can't even push the chicken in her mouth because she wants to get to those dogs over there. 
I need to get her attention on me. So my goal is to create distance away from the distraction. So I'm gonna go that way right now and get away from those other dogs. That's the thing, come on. Come on. Over here, come on, it's okay. And she's got a really high-pitched squealer, come on. Yes, yes. Well, almost, almost, gotta go farther. So I'm still not far enough away from the distraction. I gotta keep going. Now I'm gonna test for compliance over here. Sit, no, nope, still don't have it. Just as examples, right? Dogs who are well trained don't ever need to look at our faces. No matter what they're doing, how high level of state they're in, when the training is done to a high level and elite level, and when I say that, I mean that those levels really mean that a dog is trained, right? They're, they're trained. They're fluent in their understanding of training. So, give you a few examples. Here, just one of, oof. Here's a dog. That day that I just started that was crazy and could not be controlled, the owner never walked the dog anymore. Because it sees a dog, it goes out of its mind. <laughs> Trying to go after them, bite them. And within a few minutes, we have the dog passing by the dog back and forth because we got control now. We don't mind the dog looks at the dog, right? We pass, we never avoid looking at the other dog. Look at it, right? But because we just taught you how to behave in life, we don't need to teach you avoidance. I want you to see the dog coming. I want you to be able to look at the dog that you were blowing up at all out of, the, out of your crazy head at, right? And now learn to be controlled passive by yourself without any help from owner handler that I need to tell you hey hey look at me so that when we pass this dog you don't go crazy right here obvious you see the blowing up a few minutes later teaching him how to walk properly walking next to us and the dog was blowing up it perfectly going back and forth past and no crazy and we we're not trying to take the dog's attention off of that dog, right? We're teaching it, you're gonna see a million dogs in life and I don't want you blowing up at any of any more, but I don't care what you do, you don't have to look at me, I don't mind you look at the dogs, just don't have a crazy moment. So we never redirect a dog's attention off of what it wants, right? To be able to focus it must learn how to go through what drives it crazy without our help and redirecting the dog's attention to us. Okay. All right, whenever you're ready. We, we can go close. Yeah, you want? We'll get close. Then you know you really did it. You have it trained. You fixed it. 
you did not put a Band-Aid on it if the dog can't walk past dogs and go, ah, sit, look at me, look at me, right? That is just absurd. Now here, I'm going to just throw some other scenarios as a little bit of a... So here, you're going to see this Doberman, one of my clients. We're like 50 yards back, right? The owner doesn't mind. He goes and chases ducks and has a good time. So here you'll see him chase ducks. They all fly to the water. And then the dog is going to be running on the water ledge. He wants the ducks, right? He wants to get in the water. He's trying to figure out how to get close enough to the ducks. And then, out of nowhere, he's going to ask for a sit command while the dog is hunting the lake while he's not looking at us 50 yards away. <laughs> I don't think so. You don't think so? No, I don't know. I mean, I walk here all the time. I don't think so. <laughs> Tell him. Right, so there he asks him as the dog is trying to figure out in his mind. He's got ducks on his mind. He's trying to figure out the water how he's going to do this and get in there or get the ducks to come close. We ask for a sit command 50 yards away. He's not looking at us and he sits right away while he's still looking at the lake and the ducks when he sits. Tell him. Sit. Good not looking back to us and the owner. That is obedience training. Here, highest state of a, a mind being somewhere else in chaos, right? You're going to see Rocco here, the shepherd, biting me. I tell the owner to tell him out. Now he's not looking at her. He's on me and his back is to her. He lets go right away. He does not need to look at her. And from there, she tells him to down. Right? While he wants to bite me again, tells him down, and he downs instantly without having to look at her. She's behind him and his mind is on me and he can't see her. So he outs out of aggression, he downs out of her. <laughs> right? This is high level dogs, right? There's no such thing as, look at me, to get them, right? Dogs should be able to listen from wherever you are with their backs to you. They understand fluently the commands, right? He knows he must let go the first time he's told. He instantly lets go perfectly without looking at her or knowing where she is. Down, boom, in his mind he's thinking about rebiting but he listens to her while his mind is somewhere else and she's all the way behind he doesn't need to be looking at her or seeing her to respond to commands and he's in a highest state of aggression fight mode right now and he still listens perfectly when she tells him to do something and he's really in an emotional state somewhere else here I show one of my golden retriever puppies. Loves this other little puppy, right? They play together, they go crazy together.
Yeah, it's okay. So I'm using this little puppy against the golden to test her skills of listening when she's not paying attention. This would be the same as her going to a duck, her going to an animal, whatever it would be. Her passion to play with dogs and this little dog she loves, I'm using it just as if she was going to go chase an animal, right? So here you're going to see from the corner of the screen, she dive bombs into the ground and wants to get under the owner and play with this puppy. And as soon as I call her, boom, she flies out in an instant. What are you here? Hi. Good girl. Yes. <laughs> Ladies, come here. Yes, good girl. Not looking at me, not seeing me, and just hearing my voice in a split second, boom, right back to me. Ladies, come Yes, good girl. Then I let her go again to test her. Can I stop her halfway this time? Ready, come Yes, good Wow. It's too much for me, sir. And boom, just like that, with me behind her and her not looking, just from voice control. Boom! And turns and runs right back to me. Perfect. This is how you do dog training. Right? Never ever we use a command in my system. I have never done it. I will never use it. Right? It makes no sense. It says to people who know anything that the trainer who's using that technique is amateur and does not know dog training at a high level, right? Because we don't need to control the environment around us for our dogs to listen. The look at me is a command that has been built into a system that needs a lot of help, right? Again, controlling your dog because you know that you won't be able to control it in an environment where it wants something else. So it's meant as a distractor from reality because you will never be able to control that dog. Why? Because that tells you that your dog is not trained well enough to be able to deal with anything that, has, that your dog has interest in in life. You will never be able to keep them under control. You will lose them. You know you will lose them. <laughs> so the look at me has been built in to a weak system of a method, right? To be able to redirect because those dogs will never be able to look at life around them, right? As long as things are calm and passive, that dog might be fine. Anything that comes to the environment that gets it going at all is gonna be a big problem and that owner in life will never, ever, no matter how long they work at the look at me, will ever be able to control their dogs in society when their dog wants something else because they've never taught the dog to go through it and actually learn how to check itself or control itself. It's only been redirected to this so it can't look at what it wants. Avoidance behavior. Most people who see that come in actually think it has purpose and that it has a function so I hope I cleared this up, that it has no place in life. If your dog is well trained, you will never ever need that. So, till next time, Richard Hines, Miami Dog Whisperer.